Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know what time it is. You just tuned in to the most exclusive podcast in the city, in the state, in the space, out of space, in your face. Mogul moves only. You did. Let's just make a secret. Yeah. I wanna see you again. I don't wanna And I got a heavy hit of the game just right now. We are just friends, don't mind all the Oh, one of the biggest tracks of the year right now. In all of the drama. With one of the we biggest bosses right now. They don't think that you a star. And we gonna go up right now. Yeah. So y'all sit back. I got a real treat for y'all. Yeah. Just let that shit rock. I feel like I gotta close my eyes to that shit. Yeah. I know y'all gonna really enjoy this one. Celebrity in the building. Vogel moves only. That's our only moves we make it. Yeah, the dead. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so happy that you found me. The one and you want us around me. I don't want to hear the crowd. I want to feel the rhythm. Yo, yo, you go turn that down. Yo, 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 you just tuned in to the most exclusive podcast. Mogul Moves Only. With your boy, Big D the Mogul, aka Shook Diddy, aka Illuminati Jack, aka Big Thanos, aka Heaven on Earth, aka Nick Fury. AKA dry rub shawty why because I'm good before the drip I don't need no saucy on the dick And I got a heavy heavy hitter But y'all know before I introduce my special 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 guest Gotta get to the business Shout out to all my listeners on Spotify, Apple Music, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Podbean uh, Those who watching this on YouTube Hey make sure y'all click that subscribe button Make sure you share it. Make sure y'all comment, rate, all that good stuff, man. We check it in right now, Bogle Media Studios. Bogle Moves only with your host, Big D the Bogle. Um, if you're ever looking for the audio recording services, podcasts, studio time, cook-up sessions, um, want to do your old podcast like this, hit us up, moglemediallc.com. Sorry again, moglemediallc.com. Or hit us up, teammogulmedia at gmail.com if you'd like to be a guest or love to be a sponsor. We would love to have you guys. But back to the basics on why we really here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I got a big heavy hit in the game. I know y'all see him all over the streets. One of the most sought after vocalists in the game right now. He's just been featured on my favorite artists of all time. Definitely my top five new album, Porter Miami 2, on the Rick Ross. Y'all heard on, with, on this track, Bogus Charms, with Rick Ross and Meek Bill. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage or to the podcast, Sam Harvey. Let me get the, po- the, the round of applause one more time. Uh, there's some explosions. There's some horns. We're going to just... Get it elated, man. I, I I appreciate you coming out, man. Yeah, man. And, and, and joining me, man. I feel like exclusive. You said you haven't done many interviews, so I'm glad to be one of the first ones because it's a lot of platforms in the city that's mm-hmm. definitely going to be after you, man. But how you doing? I'm doing well, man. I mean, you looking yeah. amazing. You're always looking like it, a bro. star. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, uh, off the air, I remember the first time seeing you probably two years ago. I walked in the room in the studio, and as soon as I saw you, I was like, damn, that kid, just just your whole makeup just look immediately like this is what you was born to do, man. <laughs> Thank you, bro. So we came yeah. into a single, man. Kind of tell us about that single we came into because that joint was fire. Yeah, man. That's uh, one of the that's the second single I actually put out called They're All Wrong. And uh, yeah, man, I think I'm going to re-release it a little bit later because okay. I think it needs some more exposure, you know? Absolutely. So right but, now, where can people find it? You can find it on Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, SoundCloud, everywhere. Okay. Yeah. 
so the streaming platform. So the name Seb Harvey, is this like your actual government name or this is just yeah. your artistic name? So you just kept it simple. Yeah, my name's Samuel Preston Harvey. Okay. And I just made it Sam Harvey. That is a very, very Caucasian name. <laughs> very, very <laughs> Caucasian. <laughs> it's all good, man. Um, so anyway, man, a lot of things happen around, man. Of course, we want to get to the, you know, the music. You yeah. know, said so definitely the big congratulations to you on the Rick Ross placement. That's dope. So we definitely go check into that. Yeah. But before we get into that, man, just want to kind of get into some current topics, man. You know, everybody going crazy. Yeah, yeah. At least a black to the world and a black people world about the Popeye's chicken versus this Chick Fil A. Have you have you tried it? Did you? No, I haven't. You no. know why? Because it's always sold out. It's, it's always sold always out. Always sold out. I just went there before I got here. Oh, damn! So you tried yeah. to get it? Yeah. See, it's not a black thing. See, I don't, I don't feel bad now. Yeah, you know, know what I'm saying? Black Twitter, we get all hard on each other, talking. So we ain't support shit. We if we support what? each other, like we support this chicken. Nah. You know what I'm saying? But Popeyes is dope. Hey, shout out to Popeyes, man. Yeah. I, I I hope to taste the chicken one day. But mm-hmm. people get all this fanfare about chicken, but my favorite chicken sandwich comes from Wendy's. The, the spicy chicken sandwich for Wendy's, that joint be hot. It be popping. Okay. Like, don't get me twisted. Chick fil A is very upper echelon. It's very premium. Yeah. But people sleeping on the Wendy's joint. Okay. I can so, respect that. So a lot of other things, I know I tried to talk to another guy. Maybe this be showing my age. Yeah. Did you go see Lion King? No, nah, man. I I was about to, and then everybody told me like they were very disappointed. So nah. I, didn't, I didn't get around to go see it, but it's all good, man. <laughs> so a lot of lists is popping off in the city right now, right? Uh-huh. So like everybody dropping their top fifty artists of all time. Yeah. Right now, who is say up top five artists? Whether it's hip hop or any genre, of all time. What's yeah. what's your top five? Man, um, SZA, Billie Eilish, uh, Tyler the Creator. Man, there's so many out there right now. Black Bear's dope. Uh, oh, Lucky Day. Okay, he's freaking crazy. Yeah, Ooh. I've been listening to his couple EPs he's put out, and they're dope. And I love her. She's dope. She's dope. Absolutely. Yeah. Growing up, like, what were some of your top musical influences? Whew, so my dad is 73 years old. Okay, wow. So okay. born in 1947. Are you how old? I'm 22. That let you know, guys, we can, we yeah. can pop those things off <laughs> and t- as long as you got breath. And guess what? He had a vasectomy. Oh. Seven and a half years later, I popped out somehow. Oh. I don't don't tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't tell me that. Oh. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me one more time. Oh. They didn't yeah, do man. that shit right. <laughs> oh, <not>. man. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, now it was meant for you to be here. Yeah. He yeah. have any more after you? Mm-hmm. Nope. Oh, so, nah, yeah, you was yeah. the miracle, baby. You was meant yeah. to be here. <laughs> Through all eyes. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I'm blessed. <laughs> so, who, who, so, your dad. Yeah. So, so who, he raised me on 50s to 80s music. My whole life, so okay. It started with like Etta James, Jackie Wilson, Billie Holiday. Oh yeah, he gave you some good ones. Oh yeah, and um, then it went to like Stevie Wonder, Earth, Wind, and Fire, Tower Power, just a lot of funk and R and B. Your dad and black? A lot of Motown. No, you show? Huh? You show he not black? Yeah. Hey man, shout out to <laughs> Pops with all the to, soul, man. Man, he used he was a rock star back in the seventies. Like, okay. He uh, opened up for Little Richard. Oh wow! He uh, he was a drummer for Hughes Corporation for a long time. Okay, he was in the movie Blackula oh, with man. Hughes Corporation. Like he was doing a lot of stuff back in the seventies. So, okay, yeah, I'm really inspired. So, yeah. what's your pops bring you into the music? So, give us a little bit of background. Where you from? And give us a little origin yeah. of you growing up. Yeah, so I'm originally from Orange County, uh, Orange County, California. Okay, <laughs> but I moved here when I was six, so I grew up in Louisville. And uh, I always was into music because my dad, you yeah. know, so I, I was raised playing drums until okay. I was like 13. And then uh, I just really got inspired to play the guitar. My brother was gigging around a lot, doing a lot of like church events. And, okay. And so I was like, maybe I could do that, you know. Oh, that's so dope. I picked up the guitar and went on YouTube and taught myself how to play. Oh, wow. And uh, once I started doing that, I just started singing with it. And, you know, I was hanging out with my best friend one time and... I would always just sing, like, for fun, just because it was funny, you know. But then he was like, yo, like, you could actually sing. And I was like, huh. Maybe, Start pulling maybe the I girls could. with it. Was the girls coming around, <laughs> crowd around? The thing is, no, man, like, in that period of time, I didn't tell anybody, not even my brother, for, like, months and months and months. Because I just wanted to 
keep improving. You know, what, what but, you said that, you know what that kind of reminds me of? You ever yeah. watch Step Brothers? <laughs> When they was in a room where he was trying to get Will Ferrell to sing. Yeah. It's like, you have a voice of an angel. That's that's what that shit reminds me yeah. of. But no, no go funny. ahead. My bad. I didn't mean to cut you off. So, no, like, with your good. brother. And yeah. so, you started singing. Yeah. yeah. So, after I was practicing for a while, I showed my brother. I was like, hey, I learned a couple songs. I learned, like, a Maroon 5 song. <laughs> okay. And I showed him, and he was like, what? Like, how did you do this? And so he let me open up from at a coffee shop. And oh, that was wow. my first gig. And I was 15. And um, it was a weird experience, but <laughs> it was dope. Like, it was the first time I really sang in front of anybody. And even though it was a coffee shop, I was so nervous. Like, I can extremely imagine. nervous. Yeah. And I see like two 18 year old, 19 year old girls out there. I'm ah. 15. And uh, after I sang the song, like, one of them came up to me <laughs> as for. Asked me for my number, and my mom's like sitting right there, and she's like, "Uh, no, no that she's happening. Got, like, she's tatted up with a cigarette in her mouth, <laughs> fifteen years old. <laughs> she was about to take you down, buddy. Yeah, it was funny. Oh man, so get into the vocal. It's like, at what point in time did you start taking it seriously, and did mm-hmm. start getting into the studio phase of everything? Oof, studio phase took a while. So like after that first gig, I was like, I can really do this. So. I started gigging at different coffee shops. Then I started going to bars in Dallas. And, at 15? Um, yeah, 15, 16. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so late 15, I started going to bars. When I was 16, I really started gigging. Okay. And um, so one of the main bars I played at was the Free Man. Okay. And, uh, man, I have a lot of good memories there. I used to go there. I used to go to a lot of open mics in Deep Ellum. And I would just play my acoustic set, and I would have like a... 10 to 20 song acoustic set that I would, you know, switch up when I go to different gigs. And that's how I would practice, you know, and get dope. used to it. And um, through that, I met a lot of crazy musicians and a lot of connected people. And so I've stayed in contact with a lot of those people. Dope. Um, and so I'm blessed that I had that period of time to develop and make those relationships. So at what age did you start getting to... I guess studio what, uh, work. Studio work and yeah. actually like writing your own music. So <laughs> writing my music, the first song I like really wrote was when I was like fifteen. Do you and, remember that song? Yeah. Can we hear a little bit of it real quick? <laughs> you you wanna play the guitar? You could you could guitar yeah, it up. We yeah. can hear a little bit I'll, of it too. I'll show you a little bit of it. Man, actually this is like this <laughs> I'll just show you the second song. Okay, that's cool. Silly games is your specialty But I can't stand them Cause all they do is hurt me You push my feelings to the side once again Why are you sitting on the fence? I had my expense Cause my heart is breaking Into a million pieces Two trillion pieces, oh Cause your light switch mentality It's not gonna work for me anymore It will not work for me anymore Yeah Oh, do 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 oh, yeah Another night, bumping a quiet storm I'm the X-Man, this is anything but the norm Good things come to an end We were never friends Now we're left with broken hearts Trying to make amends Girl, you drive me crazy Like a broken car All you trying to do is figure out who you are You water under the bridge And my tears are bold You didn't know what a time to switch gears Yeah, feelings change But leopards can't change the spots No, everything takes time to tell Just watch No strings attached, that's the old loving You want my Honey dip now, your boy bugging. These days, loyalty has a short time. Writers, put your hands, hands, hands in the sky. I'm sick of you being inconsistent. It's time for us to build the distance. Uh. Yeah, man, that joint is dope. <laughs> Let me give my round of applause. 
That was, that's a bad. So you you wrote that at like 15, 16? Yeah. That shit is crazy, man. Thank you. So stepping foot in the studio, going from like the the creative part, singing live, what was it like the first time actually being into the studio and getting into the recording phase? Oh, um, man. The first time I was in the studio, you know, I was doing like home studios at first. Okay. You know, at a couple friends' houses. So, you know, it was a mic interface and you dig it simple. laptop, you know. But um, really getting in the studio, I was like 18. You know? Okay. And then um, I started working with different producers like Jay Oliver and Gumbo. And, yeah. You know, I just started getting used to it, you know, working with other people. Absolutely. And, you know, collaborating. And um, I really got in the groove of my writing style because of working with so many producers. And it helped me find my sound. Ha- you know? Have you ever written for someone else outside of yourself? I have. Nothing... It's been released, yeah. what I've written for other people, but uh, I'm trying to do that more, you know, because I've been focused on my music for so long that I want to expand that. And, and can you give me, like, like the process of that, right? So, like, yeah. do you go into the mindset, like, I'm writing a song for somebody else, or do you write a song for yourself? And then you're like, hey, you know what? I got these songs. What y'all think about these? How does that process normally go? Man, usually when I'm writing a song for myself, I beat it to a pulp until I think it's perfect you know for right. what it is you know because every time i write a song i'm like oh dang this one's dope oh wait no this one's dope but they all have different vibes you right know? so when i'm writing for somebody else i kind of think differently i kind of pull back and i'm just like well how would they think you know okay how to make it more personal for them you know and i like to talk with them and see what they're into and like what they've been through because it kind of makes it easier for me to get in their mindset and their shoes absolutely and so once i'm in their shoes I start just thinking of different song titles usually and just pick something that fits, you know. Uh, And then uh, once I get that song title, I start describing it. Try to get a hook first, you know, so I can just describe the hook through the verses. Okay. And it's kind of just like a big puzzle for me. Oh, that's dope. So, like, can you give me, like, um, like, I guess get into, like, the whole Rick Ross before we get into that. Yeah. Working with Jay Oliver. Mm Mm-hmm. How has that helped you advance your career and things of that nature? And what have you learned working with Jay Oliver and the gumbos and stuff like that? Yeah. No, um, working with Jay was awesome. He taught me a lot of stuff about the industry. He's always been encouraging. You know, he's always been there for me. And, uh, you know, it, he <laughs> it's funny how we work together because, like, he tells me I'm so anal, which I am, you know, about <laughs> my music. And so a lot of times we butt heads, but we... We lived together for like three years. Oh, wow. So okay. we became brothers, you know. Um, and so he's always helped me with connections and everything like that. And then um, Gumbo, he's just a really good friend that I met, you know, at the same amount, like the same period of time. Okay. You know, so when I started working with him, I was like, dang, this guy's crazy because I love R&B. Yeah. He kills R&B. He kills it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So if... Being in the industry, now that you tap it in and you definitely on the mainstream stage, yeah. and I promise everybody we're going to get to Bogus Charms and Rick Ross, what is the good and the bad that you've seen so far getting to this point of the industry? Mm. Um, the term starving artist is really, uh, really a thing. Yeah, <laughs> I've been... I wouldn't say struggling because I'm blessed and thankful for what I have and what I've been through. But, you know, I've put everything on the line for this. And I've been doing this for, you know, seven plus years trying to perfect who I am as an artist, you know, with my sound, my look, how I present myself, things like that. Like, it's just been a long process, but it's been so worth it. And, you know, I wouldn't do anything to take it back. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's get into the phase of, Getting to this record, Bogus Charms, Port yeah. of Miami 2, Rick Ross. Album is crazy. That song, not only having Rick Ross on it, but Meek Mill, mm-hmm. that is going crazy. Can you yeah. tell me like the beginning? Take me from the beginning from when y'all started the song all the way to the song being released. Like, yeah. Can you give me from the beginning of yeah. that? So Jay would call me in to just sing hooks sometimes, you know, just okay. when he had something written already, he'd call me in because he wanted my voice on it instead of his, you know. And so he had this hook written, and he was like, yo, I need you to come in. I need you to sing it for me. So I went in. I did a couple takes, and I wasn't pleased with it. (laughs) 
But he was like, no, we're keeping it. Like, it's perfect. And I was like, uh. So I completely forget about this song. And two and a half years later, I get wow. a Wow. Yeah. So I, I've recorded a lot of different, like, little hooks for him. You know? Yeah. I, I, right when he told me that that was even a thing, I was like, which song? Because <laughs> I, I just <laughs> didn't know what he was talking about. And uh, when he like sent it to me, I was like, "Oh, dang!" It was it? Did y'all title it "Bogus Charms"? No, it used to be called "Broken Memories." Okay. Yeah, and then yeah, I changed to "Bogus Charms." Bogus Charm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, two and a half years later, I get a call from Jay, and he's like, "Yo, I think you're on the Rick Ross album." And I was like, Damn. "What? Are you kidding me?" And like, I'm freaking out. And this is like months and months before I knew. It was like solid, you yeah. Know? So I've like was on edge if they were gonna replace me or do whatever, you know. Yeah. But um, a couple months in, they were like, "Yeah, what's your ASCAP? Like, let's let me get all your information. Like, this is it." Like, damn. Yeah. So once it was a, like official, I was like, "This is insane. This is crazy." <laughs> <laughs> they got to be crazy. Yeah. So I, I don't know if you want to get to specifics, but like. Yeah. Did they did they just dictate? Did you get to negotiate your points on it, or did they just like, hey, this is what you're gonna get? So Jay was nice enough to give me some of his percentage. Okay, that's you know, dope. Because I I was a singer on it. Yeah, you know, so he gave me three percent. That's dope. Yeah. It Damn. So at what point in time did you actually get a chance to like meet Rick Ross? So that was pretty recent. It was uh, last week, and so oh man, it's a it's a long story, but. Pretty much, I know this artist named Justine out in Vegas. Okay. And I've been uh, working with her writing. Okay. And, uh, you know, she has a lot of connections out in Vegas. And so she was calling people up uh, to see who knew uh, the owner to Daylight Beach Club, which was where he was at. Okay. And so the second person she called knew the owner's number. And so she hit him up, and the owner... Uh, came out the club like it was packed just sees the people inside like there's a huge line me and her just walk up and he comes out and he's like hey Damn. <laughs> what's up and then uh, he's a fan of the song already and I was like dang and so he took me straight to Rick Ross table on stage and um, we were there for like an hour before he got there and I was talking with Rick Ross's main waitress and she was like let me introduce you to him like I work with him every time he's here and so I was like Cool. That's dope. So right when he walked in, she went up to him and was like, hey, this is Sam Harvey on. And then she forgot the name of the song. And I was like, oh, Bogus Charms. And he's, like, <laughs> oh, he's like, oh, and like gave me a hug. And then he's like, you did a beautiful job, man. And then um, he just, he said, I need your contact information. We need to work more. That's dope. And it was just a crazy experience. I couldn't believe I got up there so Easily. Easily. What well, yeah. what was his persona like, man? Like Bro, he he's like one of my like favorite a artists. Good so. guy. Like great guy. Like his vibes are dope. His crew is dope. You That's know? dope. Yeah. He was he was super cool. He handed me he handed me his blunt first. Oh, uh, there you like, go. It, it, he was just super nice guy. Yeah. Very encouraging too. Hey man, shout out to you, bro. Yeah. So I so I, I assume the songwriting prices is going up right now, right? So like <laughs> yeah. if somebody wanted to get Sam Harvey yeah. on uh um get you to write or to get you on a feature like what yeah. what 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 would that go for right now Right now I'm doing verses for 1500 and then hooks for 25 Yeah y'all hear it. Get your bands up yes, Get sir. your bands up Keep playing with you So like um so far as yourself when it comes to your music like what's what's in the works right now cuz definitely need this momentum on your yeah. side you know what I'm saying amazing placement what what what's Sam Harvey working on right now? Man, so for the past like three years, I've been stacking up songs. So I have uh, over a hundred plus songs now. Oh damn! Um, and so it's kind of been hard trying to choose which ones we want to release, and we want to put an EP out next. Okay. So the EP's changed like a thousand times now because of this all the new songs we're making. But um, we're finally happy with what we got. So we're gonna put out a couple more singles. Okay, and then we're gonna put an EP out. So um, right now, are are you signed to a label? Or are you independent? Yeah, I'm independent right now. Is your goal like? Are you one of the state? Because you know, like, especially in the hip hop world, like we 
tend to throw around independent. Yeah. But most hip hop artists can't even afford independent. Like, oh, I'm just gonna stay independent. <laughs> Shut your ass up, bro. You <laughs> don't can't even afford a phone bill. Man. <laughs> In your case, like yeah. are you interested? Like what's the like the goal? Are you wanting to be signed? Like what's the I'm not against either being independent or being signed. Okay. All I know is the papers have to be right, you know. Absolutely. And um, if they are, you know, I'm I'm not afraid of signing to anybody, you know, unless, you know, they're gonna hold me back in some way. But that would that would be in the contract. In, so. in a in a perfect situation, is there anybody like in the industry that you would love to work with? Like this is my number one person I would love to be in the studio with right now. Man, that's a hard one. There's so many good ones. Well, give me two. <laughs> give Three. me two. Okay, Stevie Wonder for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. He can't see shit, but he hear everything. Yeah, he can hear everything though. <laughs> <laughs> everything. <laughs> um, man, what's it? I have to think on the other one. It's it's all good, man. Yeah. But so you already played us a little song earlier, man. But yeah. I would love for you to go ahead and give us another cover song, man, yeah, man I can play some with Steve. the guitar, man. Everybody, man. I just want to get Sam Harvey. Before you play, bro, where can they find you on Instagram and spot? I mean, yeah, your Instagram on your social media and yeah, everything. Yeah. It's a uh, Sam Harvey official on Instagram, and then um, all the other ones are Sam Harvey official. And then my uh, my website is samharveytx.com. dot com. That let you that let you know he official. You see that man? He got a, a website. He ain't so. playing with y'all, man. <laughs> true, true artist, true professor. I Sam Harvey in the building. Bogle moves only, man. He gonna give us a nice cover. I'm excited, man. Do your thing, Sam. Thanks, sir. Tune this real quick. And I just appreciate everybody tuning in again. If you listen to this, this is Bogle Moves Only. Please subscribe, comment, rate, share. Shout out to all my listeners: Spotify, Apple Music, Podbean.com, and all my YouTube followers. You did. Sam Harvey. Very superstitious. Uh, yeah. Riding's on the wall. Uh, very superstitious. Yeah. yeah. Ladder's about to fall. Thirteen months of baby. Uh. Broke the looking glass yeah. Seven years of bad luck yeah. Put things in the past If you believe in things That you don't understand Then you suffered uh. Superstition ain't the way Oh uh, yeah Rogo moves only. Very superstitious. Uh. Nothing more to say. Uh. Very superstitious. Oh, the devil's on his way. Thirteen months of baby. Oh. Broke the looking glass Seven years of bad luck Put things in the past, yeah If you believe in things That you don't understand Then you suffered uh. Superstition ain't the way Ladies and gentlemen, the sensational Sal Harvey killed it, killed it, killed it. Where my bombs at? Where my bombs at? Uh, you know what? 
You know what? I, I, I appreciate you, man, coming on, yeah. giving me the exclusive, taking me behind the veils, man. A lot of people get on here or get into the music game and they think that things happen fast, man. Yeah. But two years you've been, for seven years you've been in the game and two years ago you recorded that song and it, it just popped. Yeah. And then that, that got to be an inspiration for a lot of artists who feel like sometimes you feel like, man, things not moving the way out that they wanted to move, but it just timed me, man. Yeah. Staying persistent, man. I appreciate that. But for listeners out there who hear you for the first time, man, what's something you want to leave with them that's finding out about Sam Harvey that's trying to make it in this music game? Yeah, man. Um, just believe in yourself for real. Like, never give up if you really feel it and you really desire it, you know. Nothing can stop you except yourself. You know? No doubt, man. But, hey, ladies and gentlemen, Sam Harvey in the building. Mogul moves only with your boy, Big D the Mogul, Shook Diddy, Illuminati Jack. Hey, y'all go check it out, man. His single on Porter, Miami 2, one of my favorite albums of the year with Rick Ross. Go check out that album, that single, Bogus Charms, Rick Ross, Meek Mill. It's going crazy. Go check out Sam Harvey. Look him up on Spotify, Apple Music, all the digital streaming platforms, man. I'm definitely a fan. And again, I appreciate you for coming rocking with me. Hey, this your boy, Big D the Mogul. Mogul moves only. And we out. Let's just make a sequel. I wanna see you again. I don't want a prequel. Cause that means we are just friends. Don't mind all the past reviews. Don't wanna be caught up in all of the drama. When we know they're all wrong. They don't think that you a star. Jealous minds. They're all wrong. I know who you really are. Timeless crush. And they're all wrong. I know that you are so worthy.